Hi, I'm Gary from PR Japonics. Welcome back. Um, this series we've been talking about cloning machines, what are clones, how to build a cloning machine, and in this segment we're going to be talking about how to clean your cloning machine and how to fill up a nutrient solution, get it ready for the plants, and later on we're going to also be showing you how to take cuttings, and I guess first we're going to go ahead and unplug this thing. Um, this has been going for a few weeks now, some of these cuttings are ready to go, um, and we're actually going to do a video on that too, on how to transplant things. Some peppers we got here. Yeah, you want your roots to get developed nice. But uh, since we keep this going at the store like 24/7 all the time, every two two to three weeks we change it out, clean it, and maintain it. And you need to do that with any cleaning machine. Um, the manifolds inside can get bacteria in them, and that can inhibit your root growth. So you want to take care of this. And let's go ahead and unplug this and meet me back at the sink. All right, we're back at the sink here. I like to wear rubber gloves when I'm messing with this stuff. Um, nutrients have been there for a couple weeks, so who knows what kind of bacteria is. Good bacteria is and bad, but um, the top of the easy clean comes right off. These are kind of cool because they sit so deep. You can actually set this on a table somewhere. It's okay to have it off for a few, like 15 minutes. It's not going to kill your plants. So I'm going to go move that out of the way. And then as for your machine itself, Pretty easy to maintain, but you gotta do this every time. Dump that out. This pump is the easy clamp pump. It actually slides off its mounting bracket here. Pretty easy. So, cleaning your pumps. This guy here unscrews from the pump, and so does any of the manifolds out there. These little spray heads here screw right off. They're pretty cheap too. You might want to just replace them once in a while. There are four of them on here. And we're gonna check those, make sure they're coming out already and all that. Let's use some hot water here on the manifold. And the water's coming out all four holes, so. It was spraying good before, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. Everything's looking good there. Your spray heads, just manually inspect them. If they're built up with a lot of crud, these look pretty good because we clean them every few weeks, but I'm going to go ahead and give them a rinse off. It's pretty easy to take a paper clip and poke it right into the back there. If there's like a little bit of biofilm that's built up there. So all those get cleaned up. Then your machine yourself, you want to get that cleaned up, your uh, reservoir. We just use a little bit of dish soap in here. We, um, you can also use a cleaner in the reservoir. If you're not planning on putting plants in it anytime soon, you can just put some cleaner in the reservoir, turn the pump on, let it run for a day. A little bit of Clorox bleach, just to kill any bad bacteria that might be in there. So this is looking pretty good now. Rinse it thoroughly, you don't want soap residue in there. And the next thing we're gonna be doing is taking apart the pump. That is something people will tend to not do. Um, we've sold so many new pumps in here to people that just, and I ask them, you know, is your pump broke? And they're like, it just kind of pushed out. Well, pumps can be taken apart. And that is next. And as you see, we have it unplugged. You <laughs> always do that. All right, the front of your pump is where the impeller is. And all pumps should come apart like this. I have had some uh, heavier duty models where it has three screws in it you have to take off. So pretty much that comes out. And then your impeller can come out. These are magnetic driven, so the impeller is kind of magnetically stuck there. So that's your impeller. This is actually what drives it. And these can get guck in there and just kind of get slimed, slimed up to the point where they just don't want to go anymore. So every, every time you get done a run, clean that out. Um, always try to clean your equipment immediately when you get done using it. 
because once everything starts to get hardened up and dried out, it is so much harder to get off. We like to keep a little toothbrush laying around for cleaning. Get down the pump like that. Make sure it's nice and clean in there. Alright, so that is good to go. Gonna put our color back in. And any little gaskets you find, make sure you put them back the way they were. This just pops back on like that. This is your little cover. These things are adjustable. You can kind of see the light going through it. So you can cut, cut some of the water off if you wanted to. Um, some pumps have this back cover that can come off also. Yep, yep, this one came right off. This is an area on cleaning machines that people don't clean very often. And we found bacteria growing in pumps before. So, it's gonna, every time I take this apart, I always shoot some water back in there and make sure nothing's building up. And pretty much you put everything back together the way it was and you're ready to go. And we're gonna go fill this up with nutrients So meet me back at the counter. All right, we're back out here. Um, now we have our water. Um, you pretty much, you want your water level to be above the motor. You don't want your water level to be above the manifold, so anywhere in this area is great. We're going to mix up for two gallons here on this our handy dandy measuring bucket. I recommend mixing your water for your cleaning machine in a separate bucket because it's going to be hard to get in here and stir stuff up because you have your motor and your manifold and everything in there. So what do you put in the water? Well, you need some cloning solution, some baby food for them, something to keep them going while they're growing their new roots. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the Clone X Clone solution here. There's some other great ones on the market. We have like Root Dip by Ecological Laboratories. Uh, you can also take just some of your regular plant food, a little bit of grow, your grow formula, and just use the seedling and cuttings mixed on the back of your chart there. So today we're going to be doing the Clone X. Um, they also make these really cool little one gallon packets, which I'm totally going to use that up because it's just a lot easier. So we're going to dump that in. I'm not pH in the water yet or anything like that. Just bear with me. All right, so that's their food. Um, I'm also a big fan of adding a little bit of beneficial bacteria, mycorrhizae, to your cloning machine. That will help keep any bad bacteria in check so we're going to be putting a little bit of that in there it's going to be about two and a half two milliliters so very very concentrated this is orca by plant success all right so we've got our food in there now I'm just going to give it a quick stir. It's a nice clear mix. It's my little stirring tube here. <laughs> All right, now the pH. We haven't talked about pH much yet. And basic pH meters, you have pH up and down. These are your adjusters. These are very strong. Like a teaspoon will change this <clears throat> a lot. Um, first thing I want to do is check my meter make sure we're calibrated right in the bottom of the cap here i have potassium chloride which is a storage solution this is blue labs storage solution um inside the little glass ball on your ph meter you might notice it looks like it has liquid in it well that's actually potassium chloride and it lets ions out in and out of that ball all day long to check what the ph is outside so when you store it in potassium chloride and potassium chloride is in the little ball the, the ions don't sit there trying to go back and forth all day and ions run out your meter will eventually run out no matter how old it is or how good you take care of it so we store it in that so i'm going to give this meter a quick check rinse that off a little bit in my nutrient <laughs> 
and this is exactly 7.0 pH. So when you get your meter, you want to check it. Put a little bit out of the shot glass. Don't ever stick your meter directly into these bottles because it'll contaminate them. So I put enough in there just to cover a little ball. And if it says 7.0, then it's good to go. Looks like we're going down a little bit. So once it settles, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the calibration button on here. This, this meter is pretty easy. A lot of my meters just have a button to push. So I push that, it's in calibration mode right now. And then it's gonna basically set itself to seven. So once it's there, it uses that as a reference point for whatever else we put that meter into. All right, so now we're at 7.0, so we're good to go. So I'm gonna give this a swirl around in here. And if you see that, we're looking to be around six. Generally hydroponics is 5.8 for pH and soil is 6.2 for most plants. So we're only off a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually probably usually won't even mess with that at this point. 6.5 is not bad at all, but I'm gonna go ahead just for this video. We're gonna do just a half a teaspoon of this into there. And this is pH down, so this should help bring me down to where I want to be. Try to just add a little bit of your pH adjusters at a time. You don't want to sit there and put too much pH down and then go back and add too much pH up and then go down again. Because it actually builds up uh, PPMs in your water. All right, we're at 5.9 now. It's finally settled down. So we're going to go ahead and put our meter, our cap back on. You should have rinsed this off too, but today we're not doing that. So this is ready to go in. We're dumping that in. change this out at least every two weeks you can go up to three if you're if you're doing cuttings that are going to be definitely done just kind of keep an eye on the pH and everything in there and that's about it all right well we've learned what cuttings are we've learned how to build an cloning machine we've learned how to maintain to fill up your reservoir do your pH we've learned all that on the next episode, we're gonna be getting into how to take cuttings, and then we're also gonna be able to explain how to transplant your cuttings from the cloning machine into soil, because you gotta be a little gentler, gentler on that. Um, and I'm Gary from PI Japonics in York Springs, PA. We also have a store in Maryland called All Good Garden Supply, and check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all that, social media, and we'll see you soon. Have a good one.